lift up your hands and begin to worship God. Just bless the name of God. Lift up your hands Jesus and worship Him. Will give you all the he is worthy of our praise. Just but lift up your hands and worship Him. You. Just tell Him a word of praise and say, God is mighty you. on Him. Just in let Him praise Him, God, and worship You. Just is the word of praise. He is worthy of our praise. The and our God, God in the righteous run into an escape. The righteous may run to the court. So the law of here, the human rights are entrenched in the constitution. But there may not be like guarantee you. of justice. Yeah. But whenever the righteous run into the house of God, into the most secret place of the most high, they are saved. Can you just worship him? Because with God there is justice. Oh Father, we we'll worship you this morning. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we worship. Lord, we bless your name. Teach us how to praise you. Just teach us. We want to know. Don't just show us, but Lord, today, teach us how to praise you. We want to praise you every minute. It doesn't matter what happens. So long as you remain on the throne, you deserve your praise. It doesn't matter what the kings of this earth are planning. You deserve your praise. Whether in the day, in the night, in the morning, in the afternoon, whatever time, you deserve your praise. Lord, teach us how to praise you in every circumstances, in every situation. Teach us to always pour our heart to you in worship. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, speak your word to us. We come against the powers of darkness. We come against territorial demons around. We bind them. We strip them of all authority. We command them to lose their powers today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you will restore the joy of your children back to them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Leave this whole shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If you are happy that you are alive, shout a better hallelujah. hallelujah. This last hallelujah I want you to shout. I don't want to see you shouting it while sitting down. I believe there is nobody here that is angry with God because you are alive. Is there anybody? Just if you are here and you are angry with God because you are alive, put up your hand so that we'll clap for you. Praise the Lord. Somebody shout a living hallelujah. Make a joyfulness unto the Lord. Today, we will hear something that will key us into another realm of worship. Unconditional praise. Unconditional praise is what we want to talk about today. Turn your Bibles with me to Habakkuk chapter 3. We will read from verse 17 to 18. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vine, though the olive crop fails, and the field produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, and the cattle in the, and no cattle in the stores, somebody say yet. Somebody say notwithstanding. Say in spite of this. Say, even in this situation, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. May this be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. What you say amen to is that no matter what happens, I will praise my God. In heaven, God tactfully created Four beasts in heaven. And these beasts, they don't eat. They are very vigilant because the whole of their bodies are covered with, with eyes. And the Bible says their work day and night is just to worship God and say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Day and night, they don't rest. 
This shows that no matter what happens, God deserves your praise. God deserves your praise. Look at, we know what happened to Habakkuk. He saw so much injustice in the world. And he was questioning God. He said, God, why this? Why that? Why this? Why that? And God answered him. After he passed through the school of God. After God finished with him. Habakkuk concluded. And he said, now I have realized. That God deserves his praise. He said, though the fig tree. The fig tree I have planted in my farm. Though they bought no more. Though the olive crop failed and produced no oil. Though the vine fail, Though there are no cattle in the pen. Though there are no sheep again. Yet, in spite of this situation, in spite of this negative situation, I will never question my God again. But what I will do, I will be joyful in my God. I will rejoice in the Lord always. Apostle said, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say what? Rejoice. I will rejoice. Unconditional praise. This word unconditional means it is not subject to any circumstances. Unconditional means this thing is beyond any form of influence. No matter what happens, it comes first. It gains preeminence. Unconditional. It means no matter what happens, this praise still goes up to God. The altar of this praise will never go off. It will continue to burn and burn. No matter what happens in the world. Right there on the altar of those praise. Praises and incense will continue to burn. And ascend up to heaven. You may ask yourself. That is what this man of God is saying true. Because there are moments when, you are, when your heart is soaked in sorrow. And you don't feel like praying even. You don't even know how to say, God, help me. You don't even know how to say, God, what is my tomorrow going to look like? Because you are not sure of the next minute. How much more tomorrow? There are situations in life when you feel like giving up. And you don't even feel like praising God again. Instead, you say, God, why? But I want to tell you, if you know your God... If you know the God you are serving, you will always give him his praise. This unconditional praise I am talking about is not the type of selfish praise we give to God sometimes. When we want to praise God, we stretch our right hand to God, praising God, and with our left hand we are expecting something from God. This praise is not attached to anything. You just praise him, you just worship, you just praise him because he deserves it. Praise the Lord. This praise must come. Whether in the time of sorrow, whether in the time of pain, whether you have plenty, whether you are in need or not. Let's turn our Bibles to Psalm 42. Psalm 42. I will just read verse 11. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, my Savior and my God. I will yet praise Him, my Savior and my God. The psalmist was in problem. Even in the house of God, he was driven from the house of God. From the place of worship, and his spirit was downcast. He was pushed into a tight corner, and he cried out. He said, my soul, you don't have to do this to me. Wake up, for I know I will praise this God again. Somebody say, I know, no matter what happens, I will praise Him. Just say yourself, my soul, do not be darkest, for I will praise Him again. It's my prayer for you that you will praise Him again. Again and again, I say you will praise Him again. I say you will praise Him again. If you believe it, let me hear your amen. You may ask yourself, is this God we are serving interested in the praise of a sorrowful heart? I saw somebody wagging her head. She said, no. The best praise you can give to God is when 
the world doesn't even expect you to praise God. Money, money has value. But the value of money changes with time. Am I lying? There are times, 1,000 naira will deplete. The value will deplete. Because of inflation. That is how it is. The praise of God has quality. Let me give you an example. The best and the strongest blow Job gave to Satan in the time of his trial, it was when he still opened his mouth to say that the Lord gives, the Lord taketh. Naked I came, and naked I will go back. May the name of the Lord be praised. That was the weakest point of the devil. That was his greatest chain because he was expecting curse from Job. So his God. But Job opened his mouth and said, I know this God. I know he will never fail. I will continue to praise him. Even if worms destroy this my body, I will praise him. Job was unable to offer sacrifices at that moment because of his sickness. But he said, the sacrifices of my heart to God will never cease. Job praised his God. Look at the situation of Jonah. Even in the belly of the fish, in extreme situation, when he had no hope for life, Jonah, he praised God. Even Noah himself, Noah at the age of 600, when he was 600 years, I mean 600 years, God brought flood into the world. Noah did all he could. He carved an ark. Saved some animals. Even at that situation, we may not understand what Noah passed through. When he came out of the ark, the earth was devastated. No house again because of the flood that stayed on the earth for 150 days. No house, no crop, no animals except the ones he had inside the ark. Even his best friends, they were gone. All the crafty men, they were gone. But even in that situation, Noah knew God. And he said, I will still praise him. It doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter what has happened to this earth. I will still offer sacrifices to my God. He never cared about the animals he will eat. Because he will not afford to feed on all the species. So that he will not feed on some because they were few. So that he will not eradicate them from the surface of the earth. So Noah still took from some of the clean animals and he offers sacrifices to God even in that situation do you know that there will be people if it has been you or me who will say God you wicked now when you know say I don't old 600 years now you they give me this assignment when I was 50 you were there you never brought it now when I don't make plans when I don't build when I have established myself when I have accumulated wealth for myself, you said I should make this small act that cannot contain all my property. But in even in that situation, Noah offered sacrifices to God. How many of us here are ready to praise God? How many of us here we still worship God in diverse, in, in adverse situations and still open our mouth to say, God, thank you. The best praise you can give to God is when everybody is expecting the opposite from you. And you still open your mouth to say, God, I thank you. God, thank you. Paul knew this so much. Paul knew this so much. In Acts of Apostles chapter 15, Paul told Barnabas, he said, let's take Silas and visit the places we have preached before. Barnabas said, let's go with your mark. And then Paul said, let's take Silas along. There was a sharp dispute that the two parties separated. Paul gave a reason. He said, this John Mark in Pamphylia, when we went to preach, there was tribulation and this man ran away. The mission I am going on now is a dangerous mission. And I don't, I don't need people who are inconsistent, who cannot worship God in the face of trouble. Few days later, just in chapter 16, 
If you start reading from chapter 16, verse 16, you discover that problem arose in Philippi. In Philippi, there was so much trouble that Paul and Silas were thrown into prison. Even in the prison, Paul said, I will worship, I will continue to praise this God. You know what happened? The prison door flung open. Your prison doors will be open today. I say your prison doors, as you worship God, as you make worship, as you make praise, your lifestyle, every prison door in your life will be open for you. Still praise God. I want to tell you that if you must worship God in all situations, you must understand, understand God. You must know the person of God. Why the Israelites were always complaining was because they never knew God. Psalm 103 verse 7 says that God revealed his ways. He made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the children of Israel. The Israelites, they knew God through miracles. But Moses knew God through his ways. In Exodus chapter 33 verse 13, Moses prayed out to God. He said, if I have found favor in your sight, Teach me your ways that I may walk with you and continue to fight favor in your sight. So Moses knew God by his ways. How do you know God? It's the way you know God that determines the way you relate with him. If you know him as a God that is always asleep when you are a problem, you will not be able to worship him. But if you know him as a vigilante, if you know him as the awesome God, the God that works in mysterious ways, the God that can use problems to bring about his plan in your life and make all things, even the problems, even the plans of your enemies to work out. I mean, the plans of your enemies and all the happenings to work out for your good. If you know him as that God, you will continue to worship him. Even if you have no job, you will continue to worship Him. Even if you are dying on your sick bed, you will continue to worship Him. Even in the face of war, like Jehoshaphat, do you know that Jehoshaphat went to war with choristers? Second Chronicles chapter 20. He went to war with choristers. They didn't even fight because they were doing what God lost best. And as they were worshipping God, the Bible says God set ambush. Wele, God willed the children, the, 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 the enemies of the Israelites because they were worshipping God. When they got there, they saw plunder. They were just packing. It took them three days to finish them. It's time to make ourselves an altar of worship to God. This year you must resolve. You must resolve that Paul and Silas that no matter what happens, you must worship your God. But I want to tell you that you have to be positive in your mind. You have to be positive. And go away, detach yourself from people that focus on negativity. People who never think anything good. Just like John Mark, who ran away from Silas. Had it been, he was in prison with Paul. Had it been, he was in prison with Paul. Just imagine the situation. Finally, let us know that even as we worship God, we must not forget this, that God is more interested in the worshiper than the worship. God is more interested in you than your worship, than your praise. Even as we give Him unconditional praise this year, we must realize that if the source it's not good. If the tree is not good, the fruits will not be good. If the root is corrupt, the trees, the tree and the leaves and everything that comes out of the root will not be good. That is why if you read Genesis and see the account of Cain, where he offered sacrifices, it was Cain that God rejected first before he sacrificed. The Bible says, and God had no respect for Cain and his sacrifice. So we must know that we have to be accepted first before our praise. And how to make ourselves acceptable is to please God, is to obey Him. How many of us are ready to make our lives an altar of worship to God this year? 
How many of us are ready? Let us be on our feet. It's time to forget about problems. God is seeking for a generation that will continue to worship Him. No matter what happens, God is seeking for the praise. Even the praise that is soaked, the praise from a heart that is soaked in problem. Just lift up your hands as we pray. Lord, we'll bless your holy name. Lord, it is time for your praise to spring up. It is time for the light of your praise to shine in the, light of your, in the life of your children. And no power, no demon, no Satan will quench it. No power in this world, even in heaven, under the world, will be able to quench the lamp of praise in your life. May your life begin to offer sacrifices of praise unto God. In the name of Jesus, as you praise God this year, may problems, even your problems, begin to worship God and vanish with your praise. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, we we'll give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.